Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening. Good evening. Hallelujah. Good evening, Turning Point. Hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome to Thursday night. Facebook, YouTube, and whatever platform we're on. Good evening. We welcome you. Come and join us as we worship the Lord. I want to read a scripture very quickly taken from Psalm 66. It says, what a mighty praise, O God, belongs to you in Zion. We, fill, we, we will fulfill our vows to you, for you answer our prayers. Doesn't he? <clears throat> All of us must come to you. Though we are overwhelmed by our sins, you forgive them of them all. What joy for those who choose to bring near those who live in your holy courts. What festivities await us inside your holy temple. Hallelujah. What festivities, what awaits you? What does God have for you tonight? Hallelujah. What joy for those who choose to bring. Sorry, verse 5. You faithfully answer our prayers with awesome deeds. Oh God, our Savior, you are the hope for everyone on earth. Even those who sail on distant seas. You perform the mountains by your power and arm yourself with mighty strength. Hallelujah. Talking about the deeds that God has done. I'm just going to jump to verse 8. Those who live at the ends of the earth stand in awe of your wonders. From where the sun rises to where it sets, your inspired shouts of joy. You inspire shouts of joy. Look at his creation. Come on. Look at his creation. You are his creation. You, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to sing. We're going to rejoice. We're going to be mindful of what God. I want you to remember what God has done for you. All the things that he brought you through. All the things that he carried you through. Go back. Because that will strengthen you. That will encourage you. Because if he did it then, he will do it again. Hallelujah. Let's just close it. I'm going to close in prayer. I'm going to open in prayer. Father, we thank you. For you deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor and the praise. We worship you this evening. We glorify you. We open. We rent open our hearts. And we say to you, God, have your way in me. God, have your way in us. Holy Spirit, we give you permission. Have your way, Holy Spirit. We get ourselves out of the way. Holy Spirit, have your way. We pray for the manifestation of your presence. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say,
Yeah. 
joy, that's peace, that's long-suffering, that's gentleness, that's patience, that's kindness, that's self-control, that's less attitude, less stubbornness, less sarcasm. You deserve the glory. Oh, 
Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. He is who he is. He is the defender. He is the sustainer. He is our refuge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the way maker. He is the promise maker. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to um, receive our tithe and offering. Amen. Amen. Let's take our seats quietly, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Wow. What a beautiful worship that was. And it still is. You know, um, when we tithe and, and we offer, it is still continuing our worship to God. So um, I have a little word because Pastor says we've got to have our word if we, uh, when we're going to speak about something. So um, can you please put up uh, Deuteronomy 14.22, please? <clears throat> says, you shall truly tithe all the increase of your grain that the field produces year by year. When I was reading this verse this week, um, I, I have a study Bible, so I went into it. And um, at that time, Israel was a, a, a an agriculture. Did I say it right? Agriculture. Agricultural land. So there was no industrial. There was none, you know, tool making or anything like that. It was all about the land. And if you read the Bible, and I know you guys do. You, you read throughout the Bible, even, even Jesus talked about it, about grain, about um, grapes, about um, sowing, about harvest. It, it's all in the Bible. And the author of De Deuteronomy is Moses. And um, he was just giving, uh, um, I believe, the, the people what God was telling him. Okay, so... When, we, when giving to God is a test of faith, Israel lived in an agriculture society, so there were, they were dependent on their harvest to survive. When they gave God the first portion of their crops, they were trusting him to bless them and provide for their needs so they could feed their families and be charitable to others. Giving to God first is critical because it shows how much you value him and expresses your faith in his ability and willingness to provide for you. When Israel gave to the Lord their tithe, they were not saying that 10% belonged to God while the 90% belonged to them. Instead, giving a tenth to God was their way of acknowledging that everything they had was from him. Amen? And when I read that, the first thing that popped out was acknowledge. Acknowledge. Just boom, hit me in the head. We need to acknowledge him. We need to step out in faith. It says faith without works is dead, correct? So let's all um, give with a grateful heart, with a willing heart, with a cheerful heart. Okay? Um, we, we give um, through cash or check. We have a, a, a share faith uh, texting. If you don't have no money or cash, you didn't bring today. Uh, it's a text give to 714-477-7736. One more time. 714-477-7736. And these handsome gentlemen, married gentlemen, will give you an envelope. So please raise your hand. Thank you. Amen. Amen.
want to say thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord God for the opportunity to give back to you Lord God just a small part of what you required Lord God we thank you Heavenly Father for the opportunity to go out and earn money like we have Lord God bless this offering Heavenly Father use it to advance your kingdom Lord God that souls be saved lives turned around Heavenly Father Lord God legacies and and families be changed right now in Jesus' name, Lord God. Use it, Heavenly Father, to accomplish what you need to accomplish with it, Lord God. Bless those, Lord God, that gave and the ones who were trying to give even more, Heavenly Father. Bless them, Lord God. Bless their increase, Heavenly Father. And again, Lord, all I can say is thank you. Thank you, first off, for our salvations, Lord. Thank you for your sacrifice, Lord. And thank you again for this tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. All right. Worship team, you are dismissed. All right. Go ahead and have a seat, please. We're going to do the announcements. <clears throat> so I know this Sunday we have a... a a good event happening on uh, the 18th. Um, it is our special Christmas celebration service. So come out, everybody, come out. Bring your family. Come and see what the kids are doing for the church. They're going to they're gonna have an awesome little play for us. So come out. Come and enjoy. Come and fellowship. Come and get the word. It, it's going to be awesome. We're going to have refreshments after the service as well. Uh, also, uh, Sunday service on Christmas Day, we're going to have Sunday service, so please come out December 25th at 9 a.m. Please come out.
come out in all your nice clothes, what Santa Claus brought you. <laughs> nah. Yeah, so we got that going on. And also, do we have anything else? Silence? <laughs> no. All right, that's it, everyone. Um, the kids, are the kids going out today? All right, the children and the youth? Yes, okay, the children and the youth are going out today, so let's dismiss them as well. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for these young people right here. They are our future. Let's give them a clap. Praise them as well. Yes, hallelujah. Those are our future presidents, CEOs, engineers, doctors. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. All right. All right, everyone. So we have a special speaker today. He's a, he's a man of, uh, in our house, a Turning Point Fellowship. I'd like to introduce my brother, Ryan Aldridge. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give God glory. Continue on in that. Continue on in that. Praise the Lord. He's a good God. No, I heard he's a great God. He's more than good. He's a great God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Man, he's so great, isn't he, family? As we look around and we see family members in the body of Christ, as we, we turn to the right or turn to the left, just turn around. Turn around and look at your brothers and sisters. That's how great our God is. That's how great our God is. It's family time. It's Thursday, midweek service, and we're amongst family. We could have been anywhere, but we're amongst family. Come on, somebody. I'm excited about that, that alone. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Let's uh, pull up Genesis 1, and 27, please. Praise God. Jesus is our identity. Jesus is our identity. <laughs> and he lives his life through us. So our chief purpose in this here life is to be like him. I believe God wants to remind us and enlighten us, each and every one of us here this evening, of who we are in him. Amen? Amen? Of who we are in him. Let's read. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion, authority, over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him. Male and female created them. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you first and foremost for creating me in your image. You could have created each and every one of us here tonight in any image you decided because you're a sovereign God. You rule over us, Father. But you chose to create us in your image. And we are thankful for this, my Lord. We are thankful to be one with you and your son, Jesus. We thank you that we're all intertwined as one. We thank you for that in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for what's about to take place here tonight, Father. And we thank you for allowing us into your presence. <laughs> Just as you already do and as you always will and what you will continue to do, have your way amongst us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. And you all may be seated. You guys can have a seat. 
Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm really excited. I see some people. Uh, Hector, I want to say thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, this brother works at 3 o'clock in the morning, so, you know, to come out tonight. I want to say thank you for everybody. We got some, uh, some faces here that maybe we haven't seen in, in a while. Uh, and and I, just, I just know that we celebrate people here. We don't tolerate people. We celebrate people. It's good to see you, Edgar. It's good to see you in the house of God. Huh? That's Edgar. That's family. That's what we do. That's family. We celebrate family. So we say it. We're good. We're, we're happy to see you, brother. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We love you. Romans 8, 29. And uh, I'm just relying on them tonight, so I got faith. <laughs> For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be firstborn amongst many brethren. Who's the many brethren? We are the many brethren. Amen? And Jesus is the firstborn. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to be like his son. He knew us in advance. See, it's easy to say that he knew us before we were in our mother's womb. Right? Because that's what the Bible says. But the Bible also says he knew us before he formed the world. He knew us before everything. We were on his mind before everything. Before he created even one thing, we were on his mind. You were on his mind, Jesus. Before anything was created in all the earth, we were on his mind. That's enough right there. I've had church right there. That's enough for this, brother. Just when I, when I fathom, when I just get a hold of that and think about that, wow. <clears throat> First John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, and I'm going to read from the uh, Passion Translation on that. First John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Look with wonder at the depth of the Father's marvelous love. Come on. That he has lavished on us. He has called us and made us his very own beloved children. The reason the world doesn't recognize us. <laughs> I said the reason the world doesn't recognize us is who we are is that they don't know him. They don't recognize him. That's the why the world doesn't recognize us. See, now, as Christians, because the majority, I believe everybody here is a Christian, uh, we're saved. We've been set free. We've been delivered. The world doesn't always recognize us because they don't recognize him. And the Bible also says to not become offended, right? So the world's going to act how the world acts. But we need to know who we are in Christ. What's important for us as a Christian is to know who we are and who we are created to reflect. To reflect is, is the word that the Lord has given me this evening, to reflect. We're called to reflect his image. Okay? Just as the moon won't even light up unless it reflects the sun. You wouldn't even see the moon if there was no sun. You wouldn't see us if there was no sun. You getting it? Praise the Lord. Beloved, we are God's children right now. We're God's children right this minute. It doesn't matter what may be going on in your head. It doesn't matter what somebody else may have said. It doesn't matter what they say. Well, you sure don't look like a Christian. Forget it. Renew your mind. Right this minute, you are God's children. You're God's children. It doesn't matter what went on last night. It doesn't even matter what happened today at work. You are God's children. However, it is not yet apparent what we will become. But we do know that when it is finally made visible... We will be just like him. Come on, somebody. I said we will be just like him, for we will see him as he truly is, 
Not everybody gets that opportunity. But as a Christian, you're going to have that opportunity to see God just as how he is. Amen? Amen. And all, whew, foggy. Praise the Lord. Come on in, pops. Do what you do. It's getting foggy in here. And all who focus their hope on him will always be purifying themselves. All who focus their hope on him will always be purifying themselves just as Jesus is pure. This is a day-by-day practice, family. It is up to us to purify ourselves. Amen? Okay, praise the Lord. Two scriptures for those that are taking notes I want you to write down is Ephesians 2, 19. I really enjoyed the NIV on that. And also Zephaniah 3, 17. If you could just jot those down for those of you that are taking notes. Because you know what? Even what I have here, I'm going to bring up some scriptures and things like that. Um, But it's up to us to take it home, to, to look at it, check it out. Right? And compare it. Look in your word. Amen? And meditate. We're supposed to be meditating on these scriptures. When I, when I meditated on first on Genesis 126, I could have stayed right there. That was enough. That was enough to minister tonight, honestly. That's what happens when we meditate and when we're purified, when we purify ourselves. Amen? Okay, Leviticus 11.44 says, To be holy... For I am holy. That's what it says. Be holy, for I am holy. Be holy, for I am holy. That's what we're called to be. You say, man, that's a tall task, Brother Ryan. That's a tall task, but that's God. You're talking about God. You're talking about Jesus the Christ. He's holy. We're just people. Look at it. It doesn't say anything in that scripture about being perfect. None of us here are perfect. We've all fallen short of the glory of God, amen? And and, and some of us are going to fall short of the glory of God in about seven minutes from now. Maybe just with the mindset. Maybe just with the judgment. That's how it happens. That's what goes on, right? Because we got this thing, the mind, okay? And and, and we got to constantly renew this mind through the washing of the word, Fellowship is great. It's necessary. We need it. But if we don't wash our minds with the word of God, we're never going to be renewed, family. It's okay. Give glory. Give them glory. We're never going to be renewed. We're created for a purpose and on purpose. Okay? So we're created on purpose and for a purpose. But that will never come into fruition all the way. What God wants, if we don't renew our minds. Amen? That's a whole other teaching. So, Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. We see two commands here. Be imitators of God and walk in love. The Bible says here, imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear dear children. Excuse me. Imitate God. Has anybody here ever imitated somebody? I, go, I know some of you guys could probably do me pretty good, huh? <laughs> when I think about it, right? And it's funny, but we all know what imitate means, right? Another word, maybe mimic. Mimic somebody. When you imitate somebody, you walk as he walks. You talk as he, how he talks. You think how he thinks. You pray how he prays. Okay? Let's just leave it at that. When you imitate somebody. Okay? Let's go forward. Our God is a sovereign God. This means he is the ultimate source of all power, authority over everything that exists. There's nothing that exists outside those double doors that he doesn't have the authority over. That he doesn't have the power over. Okay? He's a sovereign God. He rules over his children. Okay? 
So when I'm out of line, when I step off to the left, rather than staying right, get it? When I step off to the left, I'm going to get corrected. There's going to be a correction that's going to take place. But he loves us so much that that correction is only for a short period of time. It's for a short time frame. And it's done in love. Okay? God's sovereignty calls for our submission. God's sovereignty calls for our submission. Yet he is not like earthly kings, excuse me, who abuse their authority. No, 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 no. God rules in love. He loves you and wants the best for you. Romans 8.28, please. And Romans 8.28 promises that in all things, God works for the good for those who are called, for those who love him and those who are called according to his purpose. For those that love him, that's it. That's it. He didn't say for those that can witness to 5,000 people and get them to the house of God on Sunday. He didn't say those that can set up as many tables faster than anybody else. He said for those that love him. He works for the good for us that love him. That's all he's requiring for us is to love him as he first loved us. Amen? What a God we serve. Amen? How great is our God. His love is overwhelming. He did and continues to do all this for us in return for us to reflect him. Solo mente. He wants us to be the same as him. That's it. That's it. He wants us to be the same as him. Okay? He wants to manifest his character and his authority and display this indisputable power over the works of darkness, over principalities, over wicked hosts. That's what he wants to do. There's some things out there that he wants to do through us because we walk in that same authority. Amen? We learned that, right? We are in his image. So we have that same authority. Okay, you guys, you guys following me? Praise God. And Galatians 2.20, please. And he wants to do all of this through us. It's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. So I have to put this brother to the side if I want to accomplish anything for the kingdom. If there's a morsel of me that wants to do something for God, wants to love him in a way that that he first loved me, if I could just give back anything, I have to remove Brother Ryan. This dude needs to get out of the way so he can have his way. Amen? It's no longer I who live. Come on, it's okay if you want to praise him. Give him glory. It's no longer us who live, but it's the Christ who lives in us. That's what's important. That's what matters, family. God wants us, Genesis verse 28, please, 128. God wants us to subdue and have dominion over everything throughout all the earth. I think about that. Have dominion over everything. Walk in the authority of the living God in every day of our life, no matter where we are. And I'm like, man, I just want to get along at home. Right? Like, man, God wants all this, but see, it's not us. We don't have to do it. All we have to do is line up. All we have to do is reflect. That's it. All we have to do is reflect him. We don't have to try and figure it out. You don't even need to call another brother to ask him, how do I do this? All you have to do is reflect the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and you're going to walk in that authority. Amen? We see in verse 26, the first thing God gave man was his identity. Can we go to verse 26 again? First Genesis. Verse 26, please. We see that God gave man, the first thing that God gave man was his identity. The very first thing. And God said, let us make man in our image. God gave man his identity first. We were the only thing that God ever created that wasn't a substance. This means that man, you and I, are the only ones that could reflect him. 
We are the only ones that were made that are not a substance. We're the only person, place, or thing that can reflect Jesus Christ. Us. You and I. Amen? You getting it? Praise the Lord. So am I. I'm starting to get it too. Praise God. Let me give you an example. You see, when God created a dog, it's a dog. It can only be a dog. It will always be a dog. And when it dies, it's a dog. That's it. Done. He's a dog. When he created a tree, it can only be a tree. It will always be a tree. And when it dies, it'll die a tree. Praise the Lord. But he did not create man as a substance. He didn't create you and I like that. This means that man is the only person, place, or thing that can portray what it's reflecting. Portray means to make a picture of, to illustrate, to demonstrate. When you look at a fine oil painting, I don't know, Picasso or something, it's, it's illustrating something. That's the image. It's portraying something, whether it be a hillside, maybe there's cattle on it, maybe there's a little boy who's getting water out of a well, whatever. It's, it's, it's displaying something. When you see that picture, you're there. You know what's going on, right? When you see that picture, you're like, man, that's beautiful. I would love to be there. Well, we're there. And God wants us to be that picture. He, that's how he created us in Ephesians 2.10. He says, we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship. He is the, he is the ultimate artist. And we are his workmanship. So you think of Picasso, Van, whatever, the other guy, all those famous artists, God created them. Amen. So you and I are the only ones, that, this is what I want you to hold on to, please. You and I here and others that have received Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, sons and daughters of God, we're the only ones that can portray him. We're the only ones that can reflect his image. What a privilege and honor that is, okay? Okay, so let me give you somewhat of an example. Um, the holidays are here, Right? And some of us may, may be spending time with other family members outside of our home, okay? Crazy family members, right? Not everybody's saved, right? So, so here comes Uncle Double Shot. That brother already has a <laughs> Uncle Double Shot on the holidays. That brother's already two shots into it before he even gets to the house, right? And he's coming in, ah, holidays, Christmas, da da da. And he's slurring and he's, he's stumbling all over the place and everything, right? He's drunk. Right? People would call him a drunk. They would call him an alcoholic. Why? Because it's what he's reflecting. It's the image that he is portraying. Let me give you another idea or example, let's say. Some of us, when we were out there with our oversized Ben Davis, whoop, our beanies on, rag hanging out of our back pocket, Cortez, Lokes, whoop, posted, right, whoop. People would say, look at those thugs. Look at those gangbangers, maybe even criminals. It's because that's what we were reflecting. That is what we were reflecting. Getting it? Praise the Lord. And this is how people identify us. Whether it's, right or wrong, <laughs> whether it's right or wrong, we will be identified by what it is we reflect. That's it. We're going to be identified by what we reflect. Okay? Let's go forward. Because the first thing God gave man was what? First thing God gave man was what? Identity. Praise God. So the devil knew this. The devil knew this. This is why in the garden, the first thing he took from Adam and Eve when they was what? What's the first thing the devil took from Adam and Eve when they sinned? Their identity. Identity first and authority. Amen. Their identity. First thing that was took when they sinned. Okay? And the Bible says that the glory of God came off of them. 
the anointing of God was removed. Okay? And at that very minute, they saw themselves for who they were. They saw themselves, thank you, for who they were reflecting. <laughs> we're going somewhere. And not for who they were created to reflect. So what they do immediately, they scurry around real quick like, and they grab fig leaves to cover themselves. To cover themselves. They were in sin. They were ashamed. They felt like, man, I let them down. I let my God down. God, I was here. We were peaceful. We could have anything we want when we wanted it. We didn't have to work. We didn't have to do none of that stuff. Man, how could I blow this? How could I have let this come to this? I can't believe this, right? And, and, and that's what happens to us sometimes. We fall short. But I want you to know that it's going to happen again possibly, okay? All fall short from the glory of God. Nobody is perfect. But stop beating yourself up over it. Okay? Are you, feel, are you, you hearing me, family? Don't beat yourself up for it. Shake it off. Get back up and get back in there like pastor says. Amen? Get back in there. We love you, pastor. By the way, we love you, sir. Thank you very much. We love you. Miss you. So they're all covered up. Why? They're all covered up because they lost the image that was attached to their dominion. Whoo, my God. That's okay. It's you and I, Pops. We were in it all day. I already know. They lost the image. They lost the image that was attached to their dominion. Dominion is authority. When they lost their identity, they lost their Oh, that'll teach right there, family. Do you guys understand? We're all falling? Praise God. So, here's another example. The first time Jesus was confronted by Satan, when he's out in the mountaintop, when he's out up on top of a hill and he's praying to the Father, he's out in the wilderness, he's been out there for 40 days, Hungry, fasting, praying to God. What's the first thing uh, he was tempted of? Identity. Very good. He says, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, he's hungry. Your brother ain't ate in 40 days. Turn that stone into a piece of bread. Right? So Satan tells him. So I thought about that. If he did turn that stone into a piece of bread and took a bite, would he be sinning? No. Is it a sin to eat a piece of bread, family? No. It was never about the bread. It was always about his identity. That's what he came to rob and steal from us. It's not about all these fights that we, we see these things that erupt and we think it's all about, oh, oh he's trying to get into my pocket. No, you're spending too much money. You're not a good steward. You know, are you putting yourself out there where you shouldn't? You can't go to everything. You can't always be that one out there at the restaurant. And that's okay. Right? And then these fights come. And he's coming after our identity, church. That's what he's coming after. He's coming after our identity. Look at the world now. Way off the notes. Look at the world now. Big old identity crisis. Try to seep its way into the house of God. Try to seep its way into the church. To where church, we don't, we, we're not walking in what we're supposed to be walking in at times. Right? Because we allowed that lying, stinking chump to steal our identity. We need to know who we are, family. This is what keeps us afloat. This is what keeps us on top. Amen? Amen? Praise God. You see, the fight is never about the fight. We went over that. John 10, 10, please. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's it. 
He doesn't come to hang out. He doesn't really even care what's going on at your house. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Nothing else. Nothing else. It might sound like good music and stuff. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Nothing else. You might be talking about football games or whatever. Next thing you know, a little bit of curse words coming up, and you think you're just hanging out. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. When we don't know our identity, we walk outside of our purpose, and we start forgetting who it is that we are. We start speaking like who it is we are not. Amen? He's trying to steal our image, kill our identity, and destroy our future. There it is. He's trying to kill, steal our image, kill our identity, and destroy our future. When we were born again, Jesus didn't change our lives. He transformed our lives. Is there any transformed lives in here tonight? See if I can hear somebody. Thursday night, it's okay to praise God on Thursdays too. Come on. I love you, family. Come on now, help a brother out. That's why a transformed life doesn't look like your past. A transformed life does not look like your past. So if you look around and you see all the past all wrapped around you, <laughs> that's not living a transformed life, family. That's not walking in your identity. Okay, we're getting that? Okay, this means we're not hanging out with that crew no more. We're not running around with those sons of destruction anymore. <laughs> We are no longer hanging out in those areas anymore, not in those clubs, none of that stuff. Remember, remember, we're talking about identity here. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Please, voice is gone. Praise our Lord. From the NLT. Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God? And that the spirit of God lives in you. Right? Come on, somebody in the back, back row there. Huh? Praise the Lord. The spirit of God lives inside of us. Praise God. God will destroy. Oh. Whoa. God will destroy anyone who destroys this temple. For God's temple is holy. And you Are that temple. Everybody in this house are that. It's okay. Praise him back there. That's all right. Give him glory. Praise God. We are his temple. We are the church of Christ. We are the body of Christ. We are his temple. And we must remain holy. We must remain purified. Okay? Praise God. Our ultimate goal is to display the glory of God. It's to reflect his image, the image we were created like. That's what the church is, a temple of God. 2 Corinthians 5.20, please, in the New American Standard Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ. As though God were making an appeal through us, we beg you on behalf, beg, beg, Beg. I don't know if anybody's ever begged in here before. We beg you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. Okay? Man, Paul is just too much. This life of purpose that we have been called and chosen to live is not only for us. It's not just so we have the peace of God and we have the provision of God and we live in the abundance of God. And all is well with us. Yes, that's what he wants for each and every one of us. That's what he wants for his children. And that's what we have. Amen? Amen. But as well as his representatives, because there's other translations that say representatives rather than ambassadors. Okay? As well as his representatives, one of our other goals is to reconcile people back to God. To reconcile people back to God. Okay? As well, okay, so Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, please. 
Praise God. This is a, a, another command because our Bible's full of them. It's full of promises and commands. That's what our Bible's, thank you. That's what our Bible's full of, promises and commands. This is another command, but they call it great. <laughs> it's a great command. It's the great commission. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority, right? Here we go with that word authority again, right? So there's a reason for it. This is only one of the reasons. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, first word in that sentence, go. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Key word in those scriptures, go. So that means we need to leave from somewhere, right? Key word in that sentence is go. Okay. Let's go to, uh, I'm going I'm to skip that. As a representative, I want to say that. Keep that up there, please. Go back to one verse. As a representative, a representative is a person chosen, excuse me, chosen or appointed to act or speak for another. That's what a representative is. Now think about that. Listen to this. A person chosen or appointed to act or speak for another. We are chosen, we are appointed to act and speak for Jesus Christ. Getting it? That doesn't mean you need to be an evangelist. That doesn't mean you have to have a crew. And it's got to be three days out of every week. This is something that took me a long time to learn and understand. Okay? Because I, where's they at? Where are they at, Pastor? Where are they at? How come they're not knocking on the doors with me, Pastor? You know, no. We do this in our everyday life, family. We do this in our home. Yes, in our home, we're discipling, yes. right? We're discipling here at church. Everybody's here as a Christian. That doesn't mean everybody here has been discipled. That doesn't mean everybody here is living a disciplined lifestyle. Because that's what that word disciple means, discipline, right? We're talking about identity. We're still on the same subject. But that word disciple means disciplined. That's what we are as Christians, disciples of Christ. Therefore, as a disciple, that means we live a disciplined lifestyle. Amen? Amen. That's where I'll keep it ourselves pure and the other things that we're speaking about, right? As an ambassador, we are sent to this world to represent Christ, to represent the kingdom of heaven. That's where we're from. No more, we don't have to try to figure it out anymore when they ask, where are you from, homie? It's happening. Where are you at? I'm from the kingdom of heaven, man. I'm born again. I've been forgiven. I've been set free. I've been restored. I'm born again. I'm a son of a king. I'm a son of the most high God. It doesn't even matter where I was from. It doesn't matter who I used to be. None of that stuff matters anymore. This is who I am now. And I represent the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Praise God. <clears throat> Let's pull up Daniel 12.3 in the NIV, please. <clears throat> those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens. And those who lead many to righteousness... He who wins souls is wise. Amen? He who wins souls is wise. Those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Amen? Okay, let's go to Daniel chapter 6. And we're going to start at verse 10. When I think of a man who knew who he was in God, I think of Daniel. <clears throat> Not even the threat of death would keep Daniel from praying to God. When King Darius issued a decree prohibiting anybody from making petitions to God, see, there was a law that was passed, and you couldn't pray to God. Simple. You couldn't even pray to another man other than the king. That was it. You could give no one else glory, okay? We're going to pick it up at verse 10, and I'm going to read. <laughs> now, when Daniel knew that the document was signed, he entered his house, 
Now in his roof, in his roof chamber, he had windows open toward Jerusalem. And he continued. See, he knew the document was signed. He knew the bill was passed. Do you understand? He knew already that he could be one that gets thrown in the lion's den. When they threw him in the lion's den, that was for 30 days with lions. <laughs> How many days are you going to last, right? That was, that was what was going to happen if you continued on praying. Thank you. And uh, he continued. Let's go to the next, next one. Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition, supplication before his God. We're going to just read. Then they approached and spoke to the king. And did you not sign an injunction that any man who makes a petition to any god or man besides you, O king, for 30 days is to be cast into the lion's den? The king replied, the statement is true, according to the law, okay, which may not be revoked. So it was true. It was a law. It was in concrete. You cannot remove that law. That's what's going to happen if you get caught praying. Then they answered and spoke before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah. He pays no attention to you, king, or the injunction or all the little paperwork that you wrote up, okay? He still prays three times a day. He still gives God glory three times a day. He's still on his face three times a day and on his knees. Next. Then as soon as the king heard this statement, he was deeply distressed and set his mind on delivering Daniel. This, this king, right, was moved, right? Because when you find favor with God, you'll find favor with man, okay? So this king was moved. He didn't even sleep, it says. And, and even until sunset, he kept exerting himself to rescue him. He wanted to figure out how he could rescue Daniel from this sentence, then these men came by agreement, king, blah, 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 recognized, O oh, king, that it is the law of I don't know who in Persians, that no injunction or statute which the king establishes may be changed. Can't change it. Next, please. Then the king gave orders, and Daniel was brought, brought in and cast into the lion's den. The king spoke to Daniel. The king spoke and said to Daniel, look at, check this out. This is the king. Your God, whom you constantly serve, will himself deliver you. He wasn't no believer. He said, your God. He said, your God will deliver you. Let's continue. Let's go to verse, stone was brought down. Let's go to verse 22, please. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth. That's what happened. So they threw him in the lion's den. They put a stone in front of it. Daniel's sentence was 30 days with the lions because he continued praising God. We got it? You guys all understand that, right? I just want to slow it down. Okay. So they threw him in the lion's den, this and that. He's with the, the lions, big old cats. And my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth, and they have not harmed me inasmuch as I was found innocent before him and also toward you, O king. I have committed no crime. Daniel was from a different kingdom. Hmm. He knew who he was. He had different laws to abide by, right? But we're not under the law. Don't, don't misconstrue that. But he had different instructions, the word of God, to follow he had a relationship with the king. Amen? Let's go to 23, please. Thank you, Father. Then the king was very pleased and gave orders for Daniel to be taken out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no injury whatsoever was found on him because he had trusted in his God. The brother spent 30 days with lions, and he didn't have a scratch on him because he trusted God. These are not just cute stories, family. These are Holy Spirit inspired. These are facts of life that took place with your brothers and your sisters. So he comes out of that lion's den without even a scratch on him. How much time do I have, family? Praise the Lord. So we see in verse 10. 
he knew he knew what he wasn't supposed to do, but he didn't waver in his faith a bit because Daniel knew who he was. Daniel knew who he was. Amen. Verse 14, please. Even the king wanted to figure out how to help him. I talked about that already. Uh, see, because Daniel understood that he has been created in his image and he remained steadfast as we're called to do as Christians. When we do this, we too will find favor with God and with man. We'll find that favor on job sites. We'll find that favor in grocery stores. We'll find that favor at home. Come on, somebody. At home. I'm talking about some good old hot cooked meals. Like every day. I found favor with God. Amen. And with man. Thank you, Sister Alejandra. Verse 16. Hallelujah. That's it, family. That's what we need to do. We need to understand who we are in Christ. We need to reflect his image. We don't have to be anything extraordinary. We don't have to try and figure something out so the Father's well pleased with us. All we have to do is be us. Be the way that he has created us and reflect him. That's it. That's it. And it's so easy to, let's say, check ourselves on that. It's so very easy. Am I really, do I sound like Christ? And you think, wait a minute, Brother Ryan, you're not Christ. You're just a man. Well, hold on here. It says that we're created in his image. You remember that little saying they said, what would Jesus do and all that? Remember that back then? We're created in his image. That's how we're supposed to carry ourselves. That's how we're supposed to conduct ourselves, just as our father did and still does to this day. Amen? Amen. You guys receive that? Amen. Praise God. Let's put up verse 16, please. <clears throat> and we're closing. Excuse me. I love it. I just love this. Your God whom you constantly serve will himself deliver you. That's what he told Daniel. The king believed in Daniel's God. He didn't know Daniel's God. He didn't have a relationship with Daniel's God. He didn't even have an experience or an encounter with Daniel's God. But he believed Daniel's God. Why? Because Daniel reflected his image. Amen? You guys understand about how we're reflecting his image? This is the same in our lives, family. When we remain steadfast in our faith, as we reflect our God, as we are faithful and obedient to his word, as we live our lives out loud for Jesus, if there's anything in here that I go over that pertains to you, it's okay to say amen. It's okay to praise him. He's our God. That's what we're going to do. We're going to close service, but we're going to praise God all the way out. Amen? Okay, follow me. That's what we're going to do here, family. I know I seem all intense and everything because I just love the Lord, and it's, it's beautiful to know who. It's a beautiful thing to know who you are in Christ. It's a beautiful thing to know who you are in Christ. You don't have to be anything else. You don't have to be all concerned about pleasing people no more. I <laughs> just feel silly. You don't have to. That's it. You just need to know who you are in Christ. Amen. And when we do this, we become, uh, 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 we create an atmosphere. People, when they see us, they should see Christ. They should see the king. They should see God walking, like God walking. Right? Remember, remember we used to say man walking? But now we say God walking, right? They should, we should see Jesus in Pastor, Pastor Eric and Sister Celia. We should see Jesus in Brother Tony and Sister Connie and Brother Hugo and, and Sister Josie. We should see Jesus at Edgar because we're his sons and we're created in his image. 
Check this out. Your family will believe in your God. When you start walking the way Jesus walks, your family will believe in your God. Your co-workers will believe in your God. Your neighbors will believe in your God. And eventually this entire community will believe in your God. Broken hearts will be mended. Marriages will be restored. Drug addicts will be set free. Homeless will find shelter. Suicides will decrease. Prodigal sons will return home. Husbands will take the rightful place and wives will help them. Neighbors will speak to neighbors. Kids will begin to play outside again. Crime will decrease. Oppression must go. Depression must go. Sickness must go. Forgiveness will flow like living water. People will be reconciled back to God. Souls will be saved. People will be set free in the mighty name of Jesus. That's what happens when we take our rightful place. That's what happens when we take our rightful place. When we reflect his image. Thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. We bless you. We praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Whew, my God. So I would love for everybody to go home and reflect on that. Yes. Reflect on reflecting him. Yes. Amen? Yes. Reflect on reflecting him this evening. Yes. Let's pray. Yes. Father, I thank you and I bless you. I thank you for who you are in our lives. And I thank you that you're teaching us, Lord, that you're growing us. You're growing us individually and you're growing us as a body of Christ. We thank you for your living word, and we will open up your word, Father, and we will meditate on your word, Lord, and we will purify ourselves. We will lay prostate before you, my God. We will be face down, giving you glory, even during the week, my Lord. We understand our identity. We understand who we are in you, Father. That it's not just a building. It's not just church that we come to, that we do. No, we are the church. We are the temple of the living God. And we will walk in it, Lord. We will walk in it in a manner like never before. We will walk in it with the authority of the living God. And we will end this year, Father, in a mighty manner, the way that you want to end it, Lord, so that the way we end this year, we will walk right into the new year, Father. We will give you glory, and we will give you praise. Lord, I just ask that you cover everybody. Cover your sons and daughters, Lord, from the top of their heads to their bottom of their feet, Father. Lord, be with them, Lord, in their times of loneliness that may set in. Lord, I ask that you wrap your arms around them and embrace them during these holidays, Lord. I thank you for the salvations and their family members, Lord, just because they see you in them. I thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you for the angels that encamp around them as they go to and from their destinations this evening. I ask that you continuously bless them in their households. In the mighty name of Jesus, and we say amen and thank you. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We want to say thank you, YouTube. Yes, sir. We want to say thank you, YouTube, YouTube world, and Facebook land. We want to thank you for joining us tonight. Um, also, I just wanted to let you guys know that uh, we have some uh, chocolate flan celebrating my birthday. Sister Olivia is also, but she, she didn't actually make it. But we're going to have some uh, chocolate flan and some stuff, okay, right after service here in the kitchen. So come on in. Yeah, yeah, Enjoy. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. Oh, okay. I, th I think it's somebody's birthday today. <laughs> yeah, and I think the birthday is right here. It's Brother Brian's birthday. So, as he said, we don't tolerate, we celebrate people. 
So we're going to celebrate Brother Ryan and what a blessing he has been to us for many years. Right now we want to sing you a very happy birthday, my brother. So on the count of three, we're going to sing happy birthday. You ready? A one, a two, a happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Happy birthday, Brother Ryan. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, my brother. Thank you. Good job, my brother. All the best. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's it. That was all we needed. Okay, y'all dismissed. Thank you, Brother Ryan, for the word.